Okay, Sunday School, we're, um, we're in John 14 this morning, and we're going to talk about peace and comfort. We'll look at a few different verses, and we'll discuss it. I want your input on it. I always like that uh, in Sunday School. Uh, we, we, for quite a while, we've been doing the book of Proverbs for the day, uh, and that would be the 27th, and I'm altering, going a different way from that today because this is something that I see so lacking in so many Christians and unchristians, uh, saved and lost, uh, but it's so important, so we're going to talk about it in Sunday school this morning. Uh, let's pick it up at verse uh, 23. John 14, 23. Lord, help us now. Help us to learn about true peace and true comfort and help us to understand it and, and do the, take the steps necessary to obtain it. Amen. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. That's the Bible. And my Father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. So here's a fellowshipping with God. First John, which I read every night before I go to bed, it's uh, it's uh, a wonderful book. First John just takes fifteen minutes to read it, um, and I read it every night before I go to bed. It talks a lot in in First John chapter one. It says about having fellowship uh, with the Father and with His Son, and of course when you have the Father. The Son, you have the Holy Ghost also. You have the three in one. I see uh, many of us here. I, I see someone that's watching today uh, uh, has had uh, difficulties. I'm going to wave. Hi. Uh, like we all do. You know, the Bible says this. <clears throat> man, man or woman, is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. <laughs> That's the way it is. I, I was having uh, supper with my uh, with my daughter and son-in-law and part of their family. They weren't all there. They, a couple of them are in different s cities now. But, uh, of course, he's a pastor like I am. And... Uh, 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 you know, you and my congregation, and and any people, and and people in my uh, son-in-law's congregation, they uh, they have difficulties like you do. But in the midst of it, we can have peace or comfort. It now, take your problems and multiply them by a hundred. That's what I got, and that's what my son-in-law Scott's got. So we've all got difficulties. But the key, while we're here on this earth, that can be obtained no matter what the circumstance. See, don't let circumstance rule your life. You know, the, the old song said, sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm blue. My disposition depends on you. My disposition doesn't depend on a person on this earth, any of my church members, any of my family, my disposition, I have chosen to have peace and comfort. It's a choice that, that everyone can have. It's a choice that everyone uh, uh, can have. So it says, uh, He that loveth me it says, and my Father will love him, and we will come into him and make our abode. So when do you have peace and comfort? When you're close to God. Now I want you to talk to me, church. In Sunday school, we talk to one another. Now what do you think, uh, th th this is, uh, there's, there's a preliminary thing that has to be done. Chew, them, chew that stuff up quick, because that's supposed to be before Sunday school, not during it. So I know you're, Hungry, chew that up quick and have a little sip of your coffee. 
and then come on over and let's come to church. I will let you chew it, but uh, yeah. So what? What's the first thing, church? Talk to me. What's the first thing that uh, if you're going to have true comfort and you're going to have true joy in your life, what's the first thing that needs to happen? It was over here. You have to believe. And, and what was your comment? To be saved. That's the right kind of believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You have to be a believer that the Lord Jesus Christ as the, the definition of the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 it says that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again from the grave according to scriptures. That's what you have to believe. So you have to be born again. I was talking to when we were, I like to talk about experiences that I've had in life. And as we had uh, supper at, uh, late supper at Cracker Barrel. How many of you like go to Cracker Barrel? I like Cracker Barrel. Uh, you know what the, uh, what they, they have a special on uh, Saturday is chicken and rice. It's real good. They got some. They got gravy on there with uh, that they put on the rice. It's got uh, uh, mushrooms in it and several other things. And it's it's little, it's chicken pieces, white meat, uh, like chicken fingers, white meat, and it's 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 nice. Uh, so I had to, and, and we had a waitress and and she waited on us. There's six of us, and and she waited on us. And when we were done, I. As I do a lot of times uh, lately, I'll, I'll take a, a Gideon's New Testament. Right. It's got the New Testament plus Psalms and Proverbs in the back. And in, in the back page of it, it's, it's a real good uh, plan of salvation. You can read the plan of salvation on, on the back fly. Well, here's, here's one of the Bibles right here. Yeah. You can see it in church. You can see it on the Internet. They do make others now. Gideons used to be exclusively uh, King James, but sadly they do other translations now too, like many people are changing the Bible. You can only have one Bible, King James Bible. But anyway, here on the back, you can see it on Facebook. Uh, it has the plan of salvation, and then it uh, has a place if you get saved, you can sign your name put your date in there. Well, a lot of times... I'll give the tip, and I asked the lady. She waited on us. They're real busy because they got that 24-hour Rolex race out there. And so they're real busy, and they, they ran out of mashed potatoes, and they ran out of this, you know. And so, I mean, you do what you can, and it wasn't the waitress's fault. But then at the end, I says, um, I had a little Bible like this, and I says, you see, and I says, do you ever read the Bible? I says, it's a little Bible, New Testament. Oh, yes. And... Uh, I said, do you do you uh, do you believe? That? Oh yes, she said. But sad to say, kind of matter of factly. Uh, you know, you can say you can you can say you believe the Bible, and then you can say you believe the Bible. Yeah, you can say. She's working on a better tip. Huh? <laughs> she's working on a better tip. <laughs> she wasn't really. I already had the tip in. I'm a big tipper. I don't believe if you want to talk to someone about the Lord, you give them a buck. Because they're going to yeah. call you cheapskate, and they ain't going to read your track, and they ain't going to listen to you. I gave her a tip that was more than 20%. 20% uh, is a good. I gave her more than 20%. And, but what I do when I hand it to them, I, I'll have that tip, and I'll put it in the Bible. Or I'll leave it if she ain't there, but if she's there, I can talk to her, or him, whoever. Uh... But anyway, I said, she said, I said, you know you're going to heaven. She said, yeah, I know I'm going to heaven. And I said, how do you know you're going to heaven? And she was getting upset with me. Uh, there's no reason to get upset. Now, when people ask me if I'm going to heaven if I read the Bible, I talk to them with enthusiasm. Yeah, I believe the Bible. Praise the Lord. 
someone asked me then, do you know where you go? Oh, say, oh, hey, man, I know I'm going to help my born-again Christian. I'll save April 4th, 19th. That would have been my answer. Right. But, yeah, I believe the Bible. Are you going to help? Yeah. I says, because I ask more questions. Anyone can say they're going to heaven. They might think because grandma was a Christian, they're going to heaven, or mama was a Christian, or they're going, no. I asked another question. Uh, then I said, uh, how do you know you're going to heaven? <laughs> and she's a nice lady, but she'd get a little bit more upset with me. <laughs> and she says, because I believe in Jesus Christ, and, and, uh, and I was baptized when I was a child, and, and she wasn't giving me the right answers. See, they, that ain't the right answer. I was baptized when I was a child and or whatever. I was raised in the church. And she didn't she she didn't need the Bible. Save it for someone else. She got a Bible. But then I said, you know, wouldn't hurt you to read this over, would it? And I says, you gotta get the truth about what the born again. I just by quick analysis of her, I didn't believe she's saved. I believe she's a religious person. Because she wasn't excited to talk about it. <clears throat> and she referred uh, anybody who refers to baptism, whether you're sprinkling over your head or immersion or church membership or do gooder or whatever. Anyone tell you anything like that? Uh, they generally aren't saved because you you saved by belief. And so then she did take it. She says, "Well, I I will read that last page, and and I, I, a Bible is always good, and I'll share it with some." And and, and and so that was good. So I don't. She seemed like a troubled person. She seemed like the crowd got her down. It could. But if you're a waitress and you run out of mashed potatoes and some of your people are upset and whatever, uh, you can see, see, you can have joy and pe you can have joy unspeakable and full of glory if you saved and right with God. Right with God, but you got to abide with Him. You see, the majority of born-again Christians aren't right with God, and consequently, they don't have peace and joy. I'm, I'm kind of a frank person. I'm kind of a frank Christian. And if someone's all tore up and all worried about something and wringing their hands and about their sickness or about their loved one or about someone got put in jail or got the, and they're wringing their hands and, and, and they just at their wit's end, I says... Why are you like that? In fact, I am many times accused. I've, been, I've accused many times by family members and, and by and others of not being a caring person. Now, the reason they don't think I care, something happens. Bad things happen in all of our lives. You understand? It could be health things. It could be someone that's very near and dear to us got in trouble or, or sick or, or there could, there's, a, there's a million things like I was talking to my uh, my son-in-law and I we sit next to each other usually and we eat out and we talk we're preachers and, and we talk about what we're going to preach on tomorrow and, and what happened today and all that and, uh, and I have a good relationship with my son-in-law Scott and, and we, we, we talk about those things and uh, He's got issues in his life. Now, some of his issues in his life are also issues in my life because we belong to the same family, you know. Right. Uh, and so that is, and, and, and everybody's got issues in their families and this, that, and other thing. But we were talking about, uh, what was it? He, um, uh, Scott is tremendous into, he deals with athletics uh, in the high school and in the junior high, and, and he's a track coach. But all of his activities that he does in the schools and especially with the athletics, he witnesses and preaches and prays with them. I mean, it's amazing. He's one of, I can't think of any preacher uh, in this Volusia County area that does better than Scott at, at reaching out to uh, athletic stuff. And, and to, he's, he's involved in middle school. He's involved in high school. This afternoon... He'll have 75 or so, maybe a few more, a few less, Emory Riddle students, college students, 
having church this afternoon over at Emory Riddle. So he's, uh, and he's, and he was, I'm trying to think of what he, it was something that pertained to this. I don't want to say it because I don't remember exactly what he said. But it has to do, and like I said, I'm accused often of not caring because I don't get all tore up about stuff. I say this, and I think I'm telling the truth. I don't get all tore up about nothing. Some people say that's because I don't care. I do care. I can't change it. God's in charge. That's it. I can pray for folks. You ain't going to steal my peace. I don't care who you are. Anybody on the face of this earth, you can try all you want. But my peace comes from God, and my comfort comes from God, and my joy comes from God, and you can't do a thing about it. And I'm telling you, there are people. We'll tag this person. Who it is? Yeah, we want. Yeah, we want your friends to watch this too. You need. Everybody needs this one. Come on, make this thing work. Oh, look at there. Devil don't want me to get these other people on. Yeah, they, they are there now. When you tag people, that means more people are get on there watching so no one can steal my peace no one can steal my joy no one can steal my comfort because my comfort and my peace come from the Lord and if you don't have and I tell people this and they get mad at me they're all tore up and they're wringing their hands and they're sweating and they're not sleeping at night and they got all kinds of difficulty and uh, and I'm sleeping I'm sleeping like a baby I'm sleeping right through the night I can't remember. There might have been a day. I can't remember a night that I didn't sleep because I was worried about something. I can't do anything. The only thing I can do anything about is how I act and how I live. And the only way I can have peace and comfort and joy is to be right with God. Now, so me as a Christian and you as a Christian, the only thing we have to be is right with God. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Now, if you've never had any real joy or peace, or you probably never had the born again experience, you need to get born again. There's some in Sunday school this morning that I know are in that position because they've told me, and we communicate. I love them to death. I believe they love this preacher. I talk to them all the time about being saved. They wouldn't come back to church if 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 they didn't like me and they didn't believe I love them. But they're not saved sitting in church right now. I mean, right now, right here in this auditorium. But you see, you'll never get the joy and the peace and the comfort until you get the first step of born again. I told that story, uh, Barb, that's my wife I'm talking to. They were just doing some stuff in the kitchen. They're in here in Sunday school now. But I was telling a story about the waitress uh, yesterday. And you, you were sitting uh, next to me. So you, no, you weren't. Scott was sitting next to me. You were sitting next to him on the other side. Of my evaluation talking with her, I, 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 I didn't believe she was saved. She's troubled, and she'd give the wrong answers that, that I was at. Do you agree with me on that, honey? I, I couldn't. You weren't, oh, you couldn't hear. Yeah, it was noisy in there. She was sitting a couple down. But that, 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 was, uh, that, was, that, was, my, that was my opinion of it. And uh, my, my preacher's son-in-law, Scott, a preacher's got a lot of burdens. And he does too, but... He had the victory, and, and, and we were talking about this stuff. And, and uh, uh, I want you to get to peace. You dear ones that aren't saved, oh, I want you. God's not winning any should perish, but all should come to repentance. If you've been saved and you know the peace of God that passeth all understanding, and you will know that if you're truly born again and you've lost it, it's because, listen, this is what people hate to hear. You're not right with God. Oh, people get mad at me. You can't judge me whether than I said, you're not right with God because you're all upset. You're yelling at me right now. You're tore up. You're in turmoil. You have no peace. You had it at one time because 
if you if you're really born again there has been a time in your life when you've had peace through the born again experience if you've never ever had peace in your life you've never had the born again experience you need to get that but you can get it and keep it as a child of God when you're abiding in Christ and you're close to him and you're having fellowship with God now uh, how many of you are, you know you're born again, you know you're saved today? Raise your hand. About half. That's good. Uh, but the thing is, honestly and truly, this comfort and this peace and this joy is supposed to be a way of life to a Christian. I mean, Stephen got through preaching in Acts chapter 7 and that he closed out the... He told the Jews, ye with wicked hands have taken and, and crucified uh, the Savior. And it said they, they ran upon him and they mashed on him with their teeth. What does wicked Pharisees and those uh, <clears throat> religious Jews, uh, what, what does it mean to mash on someone with your teeth? They're biting on them like wild dogs. They're, ah, they're biting his arms and biting his legs. Might have bit his ear off. Uh, who was that boxer that bit someone's ear off because he was losing? Mike Tyson. Tyson. Mike Tyson. I think he was like 19 years old and he was a uh, uh, world champion, I believe. He's, he's quite a boxer. He, when he was young and in there... And, of course, uh, you want to talk about the mob. The mob controls boxing. It always has. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the mob can, controls uh, that. But anyway, uh, Tyson wasn't doing so good, so he bit the dude's ear off, or <laughs> part of his ear. But that's what they did to Stephen. What did Stephen, did Stephen say? I'm God's man. You're going to get it. You're going to hell. Wait till you get your... He didn't say to that. What did Stephen, the deacon, the preaching deacon have in the end of Acts chapter 7? He's one of the original deacons, Stephen. Deacon, preacher, evangelist. They chewed on him like dogs and they crushed him with boulders and killed him. And he said exactly what Jesus said on the cross. Lord, forgive them because they know not what they do. Wow. You took out peace and joy and comfort. That's unnatural. I was talking with Keith the other day. And uh, Keith studies the Bible a lot. And, and we, we were talking about enemies and loving your enemies and... <laughs> And uh, Keith made, I don't think he minds me saying this. Uh, uh, I think he'd say it if, if he was talking today. But he says, you know, that thing about loving your enemies, that's tough. <laughs> how, how many of you have trouble loving your enemies? I mean, that's tough. <laughs> that's tough. I like them, but I don't love them. Oh, you got to love them. <laughs> you got to love them so much like Jesus and like the follower of Jesus, Stephen, who prayed the same prayer as Jesus, forgive them, Lord, they know not what they do. I mean, they just, do you ever feel that way? Just some people just won't give them a good punch in the nose. <laughs> a holy punch, amen. <laughs> Like a blind with two black eyes, you can't tell them nothing. They done tried twice already. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but you see the thing in Sunday school today. I want you to try to understand that joy and peace and comfort are available, but it's only through fellowship with God and the person of the Godhead. Uh, who is the person? There, are, there are three people in the God. I've got a friend. Uh, he used to be around here and be part of this church, but now he's following someone that don't believe there's no heavenly father or no uh, son. He's a cultist now. He's, he's, he's not in the faith. If, if you don't have the Trinity, you're not saved. Uh, he's getting into the Jesus only movement. I mean, how can you read John, especially John four, uh, 14, 
and ever think that there's no heavenly father Someone that says there's just Jesus and there's no heavenly Father and no Holy Ghost, there's something radically wrong with that person. But the apostolic faith, Jesus told the people, they call their preachers apostles, and they say they have apostolic succession from the New Testament, and the only way you can be saved if they baptize you in the name of Jesus. Now, how do we baptize in our church, and, and what is Bible baptism? Baptism, what, 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 what does it say? In, in, it says in the Great Commission, the end of Matthew, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And it says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Is that what the Bible says? So that's what we do. Maybe someone wants to get baptized today. They've been saved and hadn't followed the Lord and won't save you. That uh, server at the restaurant uh last night she also attributed her salvation to her baptism which it can't be but when you do get baptized they say baptize you in the name of Jesus by an apostle that that'll save you but they're but but they're wrong now who is the person of the uh, which person one God three persons which person is the one I know all three of them do because you always do everything together. But who is the one that the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father uh, and the Holy who do they attribute joy and peace and comfort? Which person of the Trinity? All three. Huh? All three. The Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, it, it, it is all three because you always do things together. But there's specific things that each do but they all do it together that's hard to understand the holy spirit that's right joanne the holy spirit because one of his names is what the comforter the comforter has come the comforter has come the holy spirit from heaven it tells us that uh he that loveth me not uh keepeth not my sayings and the word which i hear is mine but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Now look at verse uh, look at verse 26. This answers our question that Joanne answered for me. Look at here now. This isn't my idea. This is the Bible. Look at John 14, 26. But the Comforter, capital C, that means God, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So there it names it, doesn't it? He's a person, the Holy Ghost, and he's the comforter. Is God the Father involved in this? Yes, because he do all his things, everything together, three in one. Is the Son involved in this? Yes. yes. But the emphasis is on the Holy Ghost. Like the, uh, the, uh, the emphasis for salvation and the plan of salvation, which part of the Trinity or the three is acknowledged for that? Huh? Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Was God the Father involved in that? Yes. Was God the Holy Spirit involved in that? Yes. The Holy Spirit convicted you. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior. But we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're saved. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so he's the specific one in salvation, Jesus Christ. Just as the specific one in joy and peace and comfort is who? Come on, church, talk to me. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Now, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, verse 26, John 14, whom the Father will send in my name. So here you got the Trinity involved again. So who's sending the Father? I mean, who's sending the Holy Ghost? The Father. Whose name does he send the, the Holy Ghost in? The Son's name. So you see the, the interweaving and the oneness of Christ. The verse in 1 John 5, 7, 
which all of the new versions, all of these devil's Bibles, they all take out of the Bible 1 John 5, 7. Keith, read that loud to me, 1 John 5, 7. Read out loud so everybody can hear it. 1 John 5, 7. They take it out, all these new Bibles, they snatch this out. There are three that, what does it say? There are three that do what? Bear witness in heaven? Right. Three that bear, record. In earth. bear record in heaven. Okay, there are three that bear record in heaven. Three that Father, the Father, the Word, which is capital W, that's Jesus. Jesus is often in the Bible called the Word. And who's the third one? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And then it says, these three are one. Strongest verse in the Bible on the Trinity and all of your uh, NIV Bible, and all of these good news for modern man, and all these new Bibles, they've snatched that verse out of the Bible. That alone should make you trash them, but there's hundreds of changes. It's not just that change. But that's a glaring one that denies and takes out of the Bible the strongest verse in the Bible uh, uh, to authenticate the Trinity, the three in one. Yes? Another one is uh, 2 Corinthians 13, uh, 14. It says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit with, be with you all. Amen. Well, amen. That's the yeah. Trinity right there again. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's 1 Corinthians what? Or 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians. What? 2 Corinthians what? 14. That's right at the end of 2 Corinthians? Last verse in the book of 2 Corinthians. Got the Trinity there. And plenty more. Yeah. Now some would say this. Well, it's okay if they took out 1 John 5, 7. Because it's there in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 14. No, it's not. Because the Bible always... Uh, you can't build a doctrine... Listen, listen, listen. You can't build a doctrine on one verse in the Bible. God's never done that. He always compares Scripture with Scripture and true Bible doctrine like salvation or the Trinity or things of that nature. You will find cross-references all through the Bible that substantiate that. That's the way the Bible is. So uh, you know the way cults are built? They take one verse and they make a cult out of it because they do what? They take it out of context. So dear one, we're going we're to finish. I want you to have comfort. I want you to have joy. I want you to have peace. You'll only have it if you're born again. And you can even be born again because more Christians than don't <clears throat> don't have comfort, don't have joy, don't have peace. Like a number of you right now in this auditorium that are born again Christians <clears throat> But you've lost the glory. You've lost the joy. You've lost the peace. You've lost the comfort. It's not God's fault. It's your fault. God never walks away from... You see, sin puts a wall. <clears throat> There's a lot of talk today about building a wall to keep out illegal immigrants. Now, I want to go on record. I'm for building a wall. Yeah. I'm for I building agree. a wall. Yeah. I'm for building the walls. So I'm not going to get into all that. <coughs> Europe doesn't have walls anymore. Uh, you know the European Union? They have open borders. It's absolutely hell on earth. And all of these countries, Germany, France, England, they're, they're, they're uh, rejecting their leadership because the Muslims are coming in, taking over all over in Europe. They'll do it here too. The Muslim religion isn't a religion, it's a political system. Don't ever forget that. <clears throat> Let me re repeat it. The Muslim religion isn't a religion, it's a political system. And it's for dominance, <clears throat> it's for caliphate, and for taking over the world. Where did you find that truth? In the Quran. It's in the Quran. So, 
I'm not getting into that. But when you sin, it puts a wall up between you and God. And then he'd like to get a hold of you, but he can't because of your sin. <clears throat> First John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we do that, then we can abide with Christ. We can get up close to him as a Christian, and we can have Comfort, comforter, joy, and peace. Why don't you and I have that as Christians? I do have it today. I had it yesterday. I had it the day before. You say, you th I don't think I'm perfect, but I can quick figure out my sin and confess it, amen, amen. and turn from it, amen. amen. There's some Christians in here. Some of you are Christians and you've been smoking cigarettes for years and, 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 and it's kept you from God. Oh, you can do some things, but you're very hindered if you're a cigarette smoker or a beer drinker. I'm looking around. I'm, I know several of you. There's cigarette smokers and beer drinkers. Uh, <clears throat> usually if you drink beer, you usually smoke, smoke cigarettes. Usually if you smoke cigarettes, you drink. <coughs> cigarettes and beer are brother and sister. They're right there. <laughs> they are. Want some water? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gary, thank you. Yeah. I got to quit. Do you want comfort, joy, and peace? Amen. Amen. All right. If you're not saved, get saved. If you are saved, get right with God. Amen. If you're a Christian here today and you don't have, you say you don't know what happened. I don't care what happened. God's in charge of everything, and through it all, remember that old song, Doug Oldham song. Through it all, through it all. It might be a Gaither song. I don't know. Whatever. It's a gospel song. <laughs> I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust His. Through it all, through it all. I've learned da 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 da. I've been through many troubles and trials. Remember that song? It's, it was a popular gospel song. Through it all. Have joy. Have peace. Get right with God. Amen. Amen. We're going to quit. We'll be picking up church at 10 o'clock. Lord, thank you now for our congregation. If the hands raised, about half saved, half not. I pray the lost ones will get saved. I pray the saved ones will get right with God, that we can have peace, joy, and comfort. Bring in others for the service. Give us a great day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.